What is up guys? It's Big Pig from PianoPig.com and in this week's video I'm going to show you one of the most useful and important things to know about when getting into Neo Soul on the piano or any instrument. If you're new to the channel, my name is Simon, I teach jazz and neo soul piano, and my goal is to help you become the best piano player you can possibly be in the most efficient way possible. If you enjoy what you see, then make sure to subscribe to the channel, and also come and join us inside the Piano Pig Academy, which is my membership site full of courses, live Q&A calls, all the good stuff, but I won't bore you with that now. If you want to find out more details, head over to pianopig.com. But for now, let's get stuck in with the video. So if you're just getting into Neo Soul and you don't really know where to start, I highly recommend getting as familiar as you can with this particular harmonic movement. This is what it looks like. And again. This little movement is so common in this type of music. You'll hear guys like Robert Glasper play this all the time. And the more progressions you hear and learn, you'll notice this comes up over and over again. So what is it? What's actually happening here? Well, it's made up of two different chords. The first one is an A minor 7, and the second one is an A flat major 7. And that specific movement of playing a minor chord, followed by a major chord a half step below, is the thing you need to remember. Don't think of this as the specific chords themselves, but rather the actual movement itself. This makes it more recognizable and also easier to transpose into other keys. So what can you do with this? How do you actually practice it? Okay, so there's two things I would recommend practicing with this. The first is coming up with as many different voicings as you can for this progression. And the other is to try and come up with melodic phrases that fit over the progression. So we could just simplify that and boil it down to voicings and improvisation. Let's have a quick look at each of those. We'll start with voicings. Because these two chords are completely unrelated to each other, harmonically speaking, we have to choose our voicings carefully. But this is also what gives it that neo-soul sound. So when choosing voicings, you need to make sure they have good voice leading. Here are some examples of voicings you could use. So play around with that. Feel free to go back and steal as many of those voicings as you like. The second thing you should practice is trying to come up with phrases that fit over this progression. Now, there are a few ways to do this. One of which is to think in terms of scales. So over the A minor, you could think A Dorian. And over the A flat major, you could think A flat Lydian. This gives you a pool of notes to choose from whilst playing over each chord. However, thinking in that way may be a little complicated if it's new to you. So a slightly easier approach would be to think of terms of pentatonics. You could play an E minor pentatonic over the A minor chord, or even a blues scale, 
with that flat five in there as well. And a C minor pentatonic over the A flat major chord. Or a blues scale again. Or you can just use your ears. Play what you hear and trust yourself. This is a great approach because you're also developing that connection between what you can hear and what you can play. And you can even mix this in with some voicings, holding a couple of chords down, and then playing a little phrase. And you can kind of just go rubato with this. Don't worry too much about the rhythm. Just think about the voicings and the phrases that work over the progression. So really just experiment with this. Like there, I was paying no attention to rhythm. I was just exploring the sounds and just really trying to internalize that movement of minor to a major, a half step below. And the very final thing I'd do is take this through several other keys. Make sure you really go deep with at least one key to give yourself the chance to come up with nice voicings and phrases but when you've got a good handle on that, repeat the process in some other keys. If you just spent the next month messing around with these two chords, you'll find you start hearing this movement everywhere. You'll get it in your ears, and learning neo-soul progressions and tunes will already seem slightly easier and more familiar. This is kind of like the 251 of neo-soul. It's everywhere, and it's really worth your time to practice it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.